March 14, 1879. I grew up in a mid-class Jewish family. My father's name was Herman Einstein. He was a salesman and an engineer and manufactured electrical equipment. My mother's name was Paul Line Einstein. I had one sister named Mama, who was two years younger than me. I went to school at Luth Cole Gymnasium in Munich. I loved classical music and played the violin. I felt that I didn't belong and struggled with the school's strict Prussian education. I also had a speech difficulty, and I would always have to think about what to say next. I remember two events that affected my childhood. One was in conquering the compass at the age of five. I was amazed at how the invisible forces turned the needle. The other was at age 12, where I found a book about geometry that I read over and over again. In 1889, my family invited a poor Polish medical student named Max Talmud to eat dinner with us. He would come to our house every Thursday. Talmud also tutored me and introduced me to higher mathematics and philosophy. One book that Talmud showed me at a young age was a book about science where the author imagined riding alongside electricity that was, electricity that was traveling into a telegraph wire. I began to wonder what a light beam would look like I could run alongside it at the same speed. If light is a wave, then the light beam should be a stationary like a broken wave. This is what I believe. In reality, the light beam is moving. This idea led me to write my first ever science paper about the investigation of the state of aether and magnetic field. The question of the relative speed of light to a stationary observer an observer moving with light was a question I would, I would think about for the next 10 years. My family then moved to Milan, Italy. I was forced to stay at a boarding house in Munich to finish my education. Then I found my way to Milan, Italy to join my parents. My parents were worried when I told them that I dropped out of school. I would face problems being called a school dropout with no employable skills. Then I applied to Swiss Federal Polytechnic School for high school in Zurich, I failed a lot of my entrance exams, except for mathematics and physics, where I excelled. I graduated in 1896 at the age of 17. In Zurich, I met some of my most loyal friends. I also met my future wife. Her name was Myliva Bari. We were married on January 6, 1903. One year later, we had our first child named Hans. Luckily for me, my job left me a lot of time to think about things and ideas. When my boss would disappear, I would jot down notes about what I was thinking. I continued to think about light. I believed that light was not only a wave, but billions of particles. I started off with the speed of light. I wrote that nothing in the world could slow down or speed up light. It stayed at a steady rate. But time and space are different, I said. The measurements for time and space do change and depend on how fast we are moving how fast the object you're trying to measure is moving. These ideas became known as the theory of relativity, E equals mc squared, or energy equals mass times speed of light squared. One other thing that I real realized was that matter can be turned into energy, and energy can be turned back in, into matter. Slowly, scientists began talking about my papers in 1909. I became a science professor. I was the kind of teacher I always wanted my teachers to be like. I told my students that asking questions was good and to think about and to think for themselves. In 1910, our family had another boy. His name was Edward. That same year, I got a teaching job in Berlin, Germany. My Leva and the children didn't want to move to Germany, so almost immediately when they got there, they went to back to Switzerland. Then in 1914, World War I broke out, and I knew it wasn't safe for my Leva and the boys to go back to Germany. I believed in peace instead of helping in the war, like most scientists. I kept on thinking. On my mind was gravity. I believed that gravity didn't just pull objects, but it also pulled on light. I called this the general theory of relativity. I thought my ideas in doing so. I became sick. Oh, yeah, oopsie. I thought that the sun has much more gravity than that. I thought and worked so very hard on all of my ideas, and in doing so, I became sick. Luckily, my cousin Elsa Lowenthal nursed me back to full health. Germany left the war in 1918, and shortly after, Maliva and I divorced. I then married Elsa. 
Something amazing also happened in 1999. There's a solar eclipse in May. During the ecl an eclipse, the moon goes in front of the sun and it, comes, and it becomes very dark. I believe that this would allow other scientists to see that gravity from the sun would make the starlight bend as it passed by the moon. Other scientists took pictures of the stars and studied them during the eclipse to see if I was correct. One of my scientists tried to stay up all night to hear about their findings. He wanted to know if my theory is correct. But I didn't. I went to sleep. I knew my theory was true. And the next, and, oh yeah. On November 16, 1919, scientists in London announced that my theory was true. Starlight had been bent by the sun. I became famous and decided to move to the U.S. in 1921. In 1922, Elsa and I were on our way to Japan when a telegram arrived. I found out that I had won the Nobel, Peace, the Nobel Prize for Physics for my work in showing that light was a particle and a wave. Elsa and I kept on coming back to the U.S. We did so until we found out that Adolf Hitler was running the German army. We knew that Hitler hated Jews, so we could not, we couldn't return. I also found out that Nazi soldiers, Nazi sh soldiers had broken into our apartment. We later sell, settled in an apartment in Princeton, Princeton, New Jersey. I began to work at the Institute of, in advan of Advanced Study. In 1936, Elsa became seriously sick and later died in the following December. I needed to find a, another job because of my studies. I still hated the very idea of war. The Germans were trying to create an atomic bomb. Quickly, I wrote a letter to President Roosevelt telling him that the Americans should create an atomic bomb for the Germans. I told them that the war would be in danger. The world would be in danger if the Germans somehow created an atomic bomb. In September 1939, Germany invaded Poland and World War II started. I was very worried and sent two more letters to President. I later found out that Hitler had killed more than Six million Jews. I was furious. Then at age, 73, I, at age 73, I was asked to be the president of Israel. I declined the offer because of my age. Soon after, I died on April 18, 1955. I am remembered for being one of the craziest and smartest people in the history of the world. I'm also remembered for sticking up for ideas that I didn't think should have been done in the world. I remember for being a Nobel Prize winner in physics and I'm probably one of the most curious men in the world that you can ever meet. Okay. Great job. Great job, Jack. Any questions for Jack? All right, nice job. And Heidi. <laughs> All right, nice job, Jack. Oh, Evan. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Here we go.